soap and detergent industry and also the glycerin manufacturer which is the byproduct of soap and detergent so as we know the uh, since if, if we wake up then the first thing we want is the toothpaste or the soap for the cleaning purposes so they are nothing but the soap and detergents also the washing purposes we are using the soap so this is uh, an important industry which is uh, mainly useful in sanitation and the cleaning purposes so we have to discuss this in detail so we will in further slides we will discuss more about uh, how to manufacture soap and detergents also how to get the glycerin which is byproduct of the soap industry so these chemical compounds are useful for human comfort cleanliness and for industrial surface active application the word surfactant which is a short form of surface active agent so surface active agent which is shortly term as surfactants then they are also used in textile spinning and are important components of lubricants so the lubricant such as the lubricating oil greases they are also prepared by the use of soap and detergents the soap are key component of most lubricating greases which are usually emulsions of calcium soap or lithium soaps and mineral oil so if you see a surfactant molecule or detergent molecule then you can find a group which is hydrophobic which uh, which is generally or we can say lipophilic so it is the fatty group we can see it may be straight or it may be branch one so mainly it is a carbonous carbonaceous compound which is more than c8 or c12 so that is generally it is referred as the fatty group so it is hydrophobic or uh, means uh, the water hating or we can say lipophilic means the lipids loving so this is generally term as head and this group which is hydrophilic or water loving or lipophilic which is uh, the lipid hating so this is term as the head group so here the head group which is water soluble and whereas the tail group which is water insoluble so this molecule when dissolve in water then this head group will have the affinity toward water whereas the tail group which is hydrophobic it will not dissolve in water at it will repel uh, with the water molecules so this will mainly work uh, at the surface level and that's why they are called as the surface active agents so the balance between two part this is it for the properties of the surfactant so the balance of the head and the tail that will tell the property of those surfactant molecules so here we are using main lid for the cleaning or sanitation purposes so we will see how the cleaning action of surfactant takes place so the hydrophobic or we can say lipophilic chain is attracted by the soil and penetrates it so generally the soil uh, the, uh, the dirt which is organic in nature so organic in nature it will dissolve the ta tail part of the surfactant so tail part which is lipophilic that will penetrate into the grease which is organic part and it will dissolve over there whereas the head part which is insoluble that will remain up then the surfactant force the soil to open and detach from the sur surface so when more and more molecule attach to it then it will the hydrophilic part that will come into picture and that will detach the grease molecule from the surface and soil it detached from the surface and as it is hydrophilic from the outside it will not again uh, fix on the cloth surface so that's how the cleaning action takes place first it will dissolve the grease then it will it will try to force and it will remove from the cloth surface and it is finally detached from the cloth surface and it will uh, it will have the emulsions in water and it will not deposit on the cloth surface again then there are very kind of surfactant so here it is depend on the uh, the hydrophobic which is a tail part so tail part may be fatty acid or may be fatty amine may be alkyl phenols or fatty alcohols or other things the hydrophiles which is the head group so head group will tell you what kind of surfactant it is if we say the head group is non ionic types then it will be referred as non ionic surfactant the head group may be ethoxylate or glucosides in this case when the head group is positively charged it will referred as cationic surfactants so the head group may be quaternary tertiary or primary amines so example is nh4 plus then if head group is negatively charged it will be term as anionic anionic types so acid phosphonic groups and sulfonates etc they are the ionic type 
So here we can say R C O N A. So here the negatively charge will be there. Then amphoteric, which will have both positive and negative charge. Generally, this is composed of glycinate, propionates, or the butanes. Then the main use of this in textile manufacture, sanitation, then food processing, then shaving soap, then synthetic rubber and plastic emulsion polymerization, then in paints as a water emulsion formulation, paper is for sizing, then oil production, drilling fluid oils. Then in inks, water in oil emulsion, then agriculture, emulsifying agent for spray and in construction work for waterproofing agents by formation of insoluble calcium soaps or bituminous emulsion. The soaps and detergents, so generally they, uh, people take both as same but they are not same in action. The detergent differs from soap in their action in hard water. So in hard water we will have the calcium and magnesium ions. So when soap uh, goes in uh, the hard water, it forms the insoluble compounds with calcium and magnesium and it precipitates out. So the action of soap will not, uh, no longer is, uh, no longer remains in the solution, water solution which is hard or which is composed of calcium magnesium. So soap won't work in the hard water because it forms the insoluble salts. This insoluble compounds reduces the foaming and clean, cleaning action of the soap. The detergents also react with this ions but form soluble compounds or colloidal but no effect on cleaning and foaming. So detergents, they have the high tolerance over the hard ions whereas soap has no tolerance in the hard water. So generally where we want to uh, use it or the hard water present is then we can use the detergents to have the good foaming and cleaning actions whereas in hard water we can use the soap for the cleaning or foaming action. Then generally the tail part is made up of fatty acid and fatty alcohols, so it is uh, necessary to see how the fatty acid and fatty alcohols are manufactured. So they mainly consume in the manufacture of soap and detergents. The fatty acids both saturated and unsaturated used in industry as fatty acid as uh, such are salts of them. The example magnesium stearate in face powder, so here the steric acid which is reacted with magnesium hydroxide. Then acid plus base will give the salt. So magnesium stearate is a salt which is generally used in face powders. Then calcium and aluminum soaps in water repellents. So they will not dissolve the water and they are the insoluble so they will use as water repellents. And lithium stearate which is made by lithium hydroxide and stearic acid it is used in greases manufacturing and the, the erosion soap in sizing of paper. Then how to manufacture the fatty acids? So generally the raw materials are oil and fat. So now petrochemicals also used for the synthesis. Then splitting fat is used mainly for the production. The high pressure hydrolysis catalyzed by zinc oxide used in soap industry. Then fatty acid are drawn from displays for the further conversion into other products. The fatty acid separation by panning and pressing or the fractional distillation or solvent crystallization. So these are the methods. As the fatty acid which is obtained for oil and fat, they will have, they will differ in carbon numbers. So to separate them into different types, we can use the panning pressing or uh, fractional crystallization uh, distillation or solvent crystallization. If you see the fatty alcohols manufacturing, the regular catalytic procedure for converting alpha olefins to fatty alcohols and methyl ester hydrogenation process are two important methods for fatty alcohol manufacturing. So here we can use the Ziegler catalytic to converting alpha olefins or we can use the methyl ester hydrogenation to manufacture the fatty alcohols. The Ziegler catalytic procedure is, in, is an important to form the C12 to C18 alpha olefins and fatty one numbered fatty alcohols for detergent manufacturing. So here if you can see the comparison of various uh, fat splitting process. So here is the Twitchell process and here is the bat, uh, batch autoclave and here is the con continuous counter current. So if you see the major difference, so the temperature here is around 100, and 100 then here is 150 or 240 without catalyst or if you have the 215 uh, continuous counter current. The time taken is 12 to 48 hours then it is 5 to 10 and it is 2 to 3 hours. So the advantage is low temperature and pressure adaptable to small scale, low first uh, cost because of relatively simple and inexpensive equipment. Here as it is hydrolyzed, we get the glycerol and uh, the fatty acids depending on the number of stage and types of fat. 
then it is adaptable to small scale, lower first cost for small scale than continuous process and faster than the twitchel. Whereas it, uh, it gives the fatty acid and glycerol depend upon the fat we are using. It uh, requires a small floor space, uniform product quality, high yield, then high glycerin concentration, low labor cost, automatic control. So this is used to get the production at a high level. So this is the diagram to get the continuous uh, process for the fatty acids and soap. So generally we are taking the oil or fat as the raw material. So fat and catalyst will be given at the first. Then in hydrolyzer with 250 degree centigrade and 4 mega Pascal at the pressure, the fat will be splitted. So fat and catalyst, they will be uh, triglycerides. So as we have seen in uh, chemistry, the previous course of chemistry, the uh, oil and uh, fats, they are the triglycerides and when hydrolyzed, they will give the glycerol and the fatty acids. So here, when they are hydrolyzed with uh, hot water, they will give the fatty acids and the other product is the glycerin. So glycerin, which is sent to the evaporator for the concentration and the chloride glycerin we can save. And the fatty acid which we are getting, uh, it is flash tank, so steam will be separated and fatty acid which we are getting, we can remove the heat and with high vacuum steel, we can uh, condense them and the distillers which are re receiving, they will contain the fatty acids and the bottoms which we can uh, um, take them for storage and the recovery of the fatty acids. Or we can have the fatty acids which is mixed with caustic soda to form the soap. So when fatty acid means RCOH um, with NOH, it is RCONA which is nothing but soap. So that soap here comes in soap blender where the different types of fatty acid we can make soap and we can blend together and we can send them for conventional soap finishing um, that is in bar or in flake or in power form. Or we can send them to high pressure pump and it is removed and in flash tank to get the uh, aerated bar soap here. So in this case we get the crude, uh, crude glycerin, we get the fatty acids and we get the aerated bar soap. So crude glycerin and the fatty acid they will be hydrolyzed over here and then glycerin in pure form we can get over here. So this is the continuous process where we can get crude glycerin in very pure form. Also we can blend uh, the soaps in the, um, soaps here to get the definite quality of the soap in the slope bender. And here this is the process to get the fatty alcohols where we are feeding the um, raw material and to get the fatty alcohols. So here the hydrogen and the ethylene. So ethylene will have the ethylation and the um, so ethylene added at the ethylation stage. So the aluminum powder it is activated and then the hydrogenation is occurring over here. Then to carry out the hydrogenation we have the hydrogen over here. The solvent to mix the solvent. Then ethylation by the ethylene. Then polymerization takes place. Then aluminum alkyls. Um, the aluminum alkyls which is formed. They are sent to the oxidation where oxidation takes place with the reaction with air. Then they are purified, then solvent is evaporated, then we here, here we get the solvent and byproducts. Then it is hydrolysis done with the help of sulfuric acid. Then aluminum solution is sent back and then it is neutralized with the sodium hydroxide and the fractionation we get the alcohol or we can say the alcohols. So here the ethylene is the raw, ethylene is the raw material which elongates in the polymerization. So by elongation we can have the definite carbon number in the final alcohols. So alcohol which is formed, which goes to hydrolysis, then neutralization and the fractionation to separate and then finally we get the alcohols of the desired quantity and uh, the desired decomposition. Then there are various methods of soap production. So first being the batch saponification process. So acid hydrolysis of glycerides followed by alkali conditions that is twitchel process or direct saponification using strong caustic in batch process operation. So whenever we want glycerin as a byproduct, we will go for fast acid neutralization or whenever we don't want the glycerin as a byproduct, when glycerin we want to be in fat or be in soap, then we will uh, react the caustic directly with triglyceride to get the soap. Yeah. The next one is continuous hydrolysis and saponification process. So this is used due to the advantage over the batch process being flexibility in control of product distribution then higher in glycerin yield, then less of color production during short time hydrolysis step, 
then requires less space and less manpower. So here this is the triglyceride, then we are uh, hydrolyzing it to give the fatty acids and the glycerin. So glycerin is concentrated and sent for the glycerin a plant and then fatty acids which are getting we are reacting with the hydroxide which gives the soap. So here the MOH is the hydroxide, so here M usually alkali metal as any or K. So whenever you want the hard soap we can have the sodium hydroxide and whenever you want the liquid soap we can have the KOH that is potassium hydroxide. The raw material here will be refined tallow, required and refined grease, coconut and palm oils are the principal fatty constituents. The metal oxide such as zinc oxide are frequently added as a splat fitting catalysis to get the fatty acids as a the product to neutralize with caustic to prepare soap. An alkali for saponification and wilder type additives, mainly rosin, complete the raw material requirements. In caustic soda and vegetable oil are mainly used in India. Tala is not allowed in India because this is, uh, this is animal source. So generally the soaps which is formed in India which is vegetable oil based soaps. Then distilled fatty acids are imported raw materials and the demand gap for vegetable oil is made through the imports. So in India, the vegetable oil, the water we are consumed is more in the food. So very less vegetable oil is remained to form the soap. So to meet the requirement, generally the 70% of the oils, vegetable oils required for the soap production, uh, we are importing. Or nowadays we are going for the non-traditional oils to meet the demand to manufacture the soaps.